Welcome back. In the previous episodes, we reverse engineered most of this HP switching power supply. It was blowing its fuse and MOSFETs, so we took them out and checked the control circuits and the rather complicated startup circuits. While we were doing that, a MOSFET driver IC gave up the ghost, and we think this might have been the root cause of all of our problems. After we removed the bad IC, we could check the PWM control pulses looked good, reinstalled a new driver IC, and deemed the power supply safe enough to reinstall all the MOSFETs and give it a go. Alright, new board, new driver, new MOSFET, new MOSFET, new MOSFET, new fuse. See if it works. Uh, I chose to monitor the control pulses of the buck converter uh, and it's through the front end of the tech but digitized by the HP and uh, to monitor the voltage out of the takeover supply which, tell, which will tell me if it actually started uh, but you know if it decides to blow there is just nothing I can do let's see oh it did start. Oh, okay, well. Yeah, and it's in minimal mode. So the, the takeover power is 14 volts continuous. Okay, let's try to test the output voltages without causing any problems. Huh. This is not good. 1.8 volts and going down should be 5. Is it actually started? No. It's starting and shutting down. What if I give it a little less voltage? Not started. So it's starting when I'm at lower voltage, so it's going into over voltage protection for some reason. So I wonder if it's not regular, not regulating properly because I don't have enough of a load. So let me put something at the output. So I have now connected the electronic load and I have an easier to read voltmeter here at the output. I've made a nice solid cable so I can draw a few amps. And I'm back monitoring the control pulses on the scope. Current, 1 amp. Whoa, it's at 10 volt. This is not good. This is not regulating at all over here. Let's try 2 amps. Let's see if it can... Yeah, I know, it goes in over voltage. <sighs> and then sometimes, yeah, get it to oscillate. So you, you can... Yeah. Look, you can really tell it's not regulating properly. It goes wide where it should go. Uh, it should go narrower, and then it goes too wide, goes in over voltage, and stops. So something else is wrong, and it's the part I haven't reverse engineered yet. It's in the control loop, and the control loop basically goes from a tick. It's reading somewhere here after the second transformer, then goes all the way back to those four chips. There is an opto isolator that references it back to the primary voltage and feeds it to here. So I have to reverse engineer all this part, which is a complicated loop actually. Okay, so the air circuitry is over here, it's been all traced out. So it's over here is those five chips and which gives this noodly schematic which actually give this not so noodly schematic you have a voltage reference that produces a 5 volts so that should be very easy to test then there's half an op amp that scales it from 5 volts to minus 9.26 and this is also DC, should be very easy to check. And then it takes the 5 volt sense and sums it. So this is, so doing analog computation here. 
and uh, this when this is balanced and there's no error uh, this is supposed to be 5.2 volts and I, the manual confirms that actually it's relate it's uh, regulated to 5.2 so uh, with the resistors this is what I get so I'm doing this right and then uh, here should be the error signal and then fortunately to explain what this was in the manual this takes the 36 volt AC puts it in an RC uh, filter uh, so it becomes a sawtooth because this is actually an AC square wave from the transformer so that creates a little reference signal sawtooth which they use to sample the voltage uh, on a comparator, so this is an uh, LM311 comparator, and out of that comes a PWM coded signal. So if your error is high or low, it will clip at a different place on the sawtooth. So now our error signal has been converted to PWDM, which means it can go through the isolator. On, on, on this side, you also have an RC that transforms it back to a voltage. So if we look over here, uh, this one doesn't count, it's the power good uh, comparator. This is the reference voltage. These are our two uh, amplifiers. This is the PWDM generator and this is the opto isolator. So if there is a fault and it's in there, I should be able to find it. We are just going to go through the chain and verify all this. Um, so that should be much simpler to test. This is on the isolated part of the supply, so I can probe it directly with the scope. So first stop is the 5 volt reference. There you go, start it. And the reference is 5 volt and you see the control loops going crazy. And yeah, it puts at 7 volts. All right, okay, reference, good. Next point would be the minus 9.26 after the scaler. Um, try it again, doesn't want to start, start it, minus 9.26, that's working fine. Okay, uh, so the next step here, input of the op amp, the op amp is working, it should be at zero volts. This should be, pro ooh, already see it's not zero volts, okay. Try that. Starting, 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 starting. Start it. Oh, that's not good. That should be zero volt, and it's 1.6 volts. Okay. Let's keep going and see the output of the summer, which is the air voltage. Let's try the smoking guns here. So now. Starting, starting, started. So that's, whoa! This power supply knows when we are close to the problem and every time I'm getting there, something else blows. So upon careful review of the footage is this probe that got too close from the heatsink and of course this is the high voltage part it stops here and an isolation barrier is at right at the isolator so you can see actually there's a big gap so here's what happened i like to use those little hp grabbers which actually i think are very safe they have they are very fine so they they, they, they don't short pins uh, when they are correctly retracted and they grab really hard but there is something I didn't pay attention to is that you can attach a detachable wire from two ends so they have a little pin here but they also have one out there so they have a pin on both sides so what I had is that I had this end towards the properly oriented away from the high voltage section but the spark got on the little point here which was uh, just ready to bite us in the butt that is perfect to uh, make a, a beautiful arc so it made a little nick over here 
and so I need to check the MOSFET and then probably if the amplifier wasn't dead yet and I think it, it was half dead now it should be probably fully dead so I have to check those two chips dang more problems this is how I like to check MOSFETs I, I'm, I'm almost sure this one is good because uh, I checked it for shorts with my own meter and usually when it's blown you got either a short between the drain and the gate or the drain and the source or the source and the gate and there were no shorts at all so my guess is that this one is good but we are going to check it for good and so you check it like a this is an n channel you check it like an npn transistor plus at the drain minus at the source and you tie the source to the gate and then you can get a turn on characteristic and uh, here we go and it's not turned on and boom here's the turn on current so it's a it's a good mosfet okay, you can see the turn on voltage and this is two volts per division i believe yeah two volts per division so this is four volts this is right on the money good mosfet but i would suspect the uh, the op the op uh, certainly didn't like it and if it was already half dead now it's probably fully dead so back to our power supply that blows components. We have added to our collection. So in first we blew the fuse, then we discovered the MOSFET had blown. Then uh, the MOSFET driver finally blew for good. And while uh, debugging the regulating loop, uh, we got an arc, which uh, for sure zapped our uh, JFET op amp. And also, uh, as I was at it, I, I replaced the comparator. I didn't even uh, test it. So it's, it's a 311, it's sent, so I might as well take it. So here are the replacement chips. Uh, it turns out the op amp is a precursor of the Nile Garden variety uh, TL072. And I have another uh, LM311, and we'll put them back in and see if we can continue the debug. So to recap our adventures in this video, it appears we took a small step forward and a large one backwards. That's another great classic of debugging. The good news is, with the new driver chip, the supply does not blow MOSFETs anymore, which is a big relief in itself, but it's still not regulating properly. I think we were close to confirming why when the supply decided to foil our plans and generated an arc from the primary to our probe which was attached to the secondary section. In case you did not see the value of the isolation trench and the optocoupler, I think we are all acutely aware of its function by now. So we for sure blew our JFET amp and maybe the comparator. But fortunately, these are garden variety ICs, so we'll replace them and soldier on from there.